Images like this are what frequently greet Seattle police when they're called to break up a sideshow or other street racing activity. This red uh, Nissan has no plates. This past weekend was especially bad as more than 100 drivers held street takeover events across multiple neighborhoods. So they came and did a little bit of donuts and firecrackers and argued a little bit and then ran off. And they're here enjoying races, seeing the, the exotic cars and the engines and the rims and stuff like that, you know? But during an event near South McClellan Street, the race turned violent. Oh, one person was shot, was ultimately dropped off at Harbor View by um, somebody else. Police say one of the racers then caused a hit and run a short distance away that badly injured a person in a crosswalk. It was all detailed during a presentation to city council members. This is a clear and present danger, and as you saw from the video, this is danger close. To crack down, city leaders are now looking to adopt a state law that allows cars used in illegal street racing to be impounded or even confiscated permanently. If the person is convicted of racing, the vehicle can be forfeited to the, uh, to the police department, uh, but not for, a, not for a first offense. Another proposal would allow police to issue a $500 ticket to the registered owner of a car used in any of these events. But I don't think they should they should enhance the, the penalty on it. I really think they should help us. We need to do better as a city to, to shut, take stronger action and shut down this kind of thing. People are literally dying. Joel Marino, Como News. Tonight in the deep end, the Seattle City Council is looking to increase penalties for those who participate in illegal street races and takeovers. And this comes after a violent weekend that led to a shooting and a hit and run crash. City Attorney Ann Davison is partnering with Councilmember Bob Kettle. He's sponsoring a bill to address these dangerous events. Davison addressed the council about the issue today. This last weekend, a pedestrian was critically injured and another person was shot. Last year, a young woman was shot and killed on Capitol Hill at a street racing event. Uh, and so unfortunately, we know that our, with our understaffing at Seattle Police, we have to be smart in how we address this. So by using uh, a different way of getting to people who allow their vehicles to be there and participate, uh, that's what we want to try to deter, is people to participate and go and watch because uh, we need to have our laws matter. And our laws are about keeping public order and the public spaces safe. Uh, and these events are hampering that. Mary Nam joins me now. So Mary, the city council is looking to increase consequences for those at those illegal street races, right? That's right, Stephen. Really is a tough task. The Seattle City Council is considering penalties now that would include confiscating cars permanently. I spoke to Joel Marino about the proposed legislation. Well, the city council seems poised to do something about this because just this past weekend, uh, there were more problems with illegal street racing. There, there was a person shot. There was a person who was not involved in a street race who was hit in a crosswalk by someone who was in the street race. So city council has been working on a, uh, a proposed law for a number of weeks now. And what it would do is really toughen up the penalties on street racing. It would, it would add a $500 fine uh, for people who are participating in street racing. It would actually fine the uh, registered owner of the car. Uh, but it would also allow police to impound the vehicles for a minimum of three days, uh, 72 hours. And if they catch that same vehicle involved in a second offense, a second street racing event, and the, uh, the driver's convicted, well, that car could be confiscated, actually forfeited to the police department. So they're really, uh, really stepping up the penalties because they are seeing a lot of uh, related violence uh, around these events, as well as just the risk it puts uh, the, the public who are just trying to share the roads as well. Uh, the assistant police chief for Seattle Police um, talked about some of the recent cases. Uh, what was the response from the city council? I think uh, the council really wants to have some accountability uh, for these groups. The, the police department showed kind of a montage of videos of the things that they encounter when they're called to these uh, sideshows and street racing events. And uh, from the videos that they showed, there's some real disregard for the law enforcement officers that show up. Uh, people were flashing what could have been gang signs, uh, mocking the officers, uh, jumping in front of their windows. And I just acting like there was, you know, no accountability uh, for what they were doing, uh, taking over intersections and driving dangerously and putting spectators as well as themselves at risk. So council really seems poised 
uh, to do something about this. And uh, what was telling was that uh, one particular council member, Rob Saka, thought that the proposed law maybe doesn't go far enough because Seattle's law does not address spectators. And he says that he might introduce an amendment to uh, introduce some kind of penalty for showing up and, and watching these sideshows and street races. We have seen these problems over and over again. Um, one noted case, uh, the Belltown driver who has repeatedly, um, you know, defied law and, and, and to keep up with his social media followers, um, you know, uh, really seemed um, unaffected by the laws. And a lot of people in Belltown were angry that he was not being held accountable. So with these uh, new measures that are being discussed, Joel, um, how soon might they be passed? So the, uh, there was no vote today on this. Uh, this was a discussion and a chance for council members to ask questions. But uh, the chair of the committee that this was held in is actually sponsoring this legislation. So I would expect to see this uh, brought up for a, a committee vote. Uh, right away, possibly even by the next meeting uh, a week from today. Um, after that, there should be uh, one more hearing, and then it could go to a full council vote, and the uh, chair of the committee, um, uh, council member Bob Kettle, he says that he expects this to go to a vote sometime in July, sometime next month, uh, at this point probably by the end of the month, uh, and then, you know, the mayor would have to sign it. So there'd be... Uh, there'd be that delay, but uh, it, it could take effect uh, at some point this summer. And as far as the uh, Miles Hudson, uh, who people call the Belltown Hellcat driver, yeah, he got slapped with an $83,000 fine uh, for uh, the noise violations that his car makes. He's back in court at the end of next month on two reckless driving charges. So it's really stacking up for him. And uh, if this law does take effect, his car, could be impounded. Hmm. All right, so to talk about that timing one more time, the soonest the council could actually vote on these new laws is the end of July. So will it happen this summer for a problem that we have seen consistently during the summertime, during the warmer months? We still don't know yet, Steve. Yeah, we've certainly seen those illegal takeovers right outside of Como Plaza right. here in recent years as well. It's certainly frustrating. Very well, the Seattle City Council also urgently pushing to enact a new law after dangerous street racing event over the weekend happened. That illegal race involved more than 100 drivers and ended with one person shot and another run over in a crosswalk. Now council member Bob Kettle and city attorney Ann Davison are proposing new legislation to increase the penalties for street racing. Right now, the law allows police to impound a person's car for three days after their first citation. A second defense can lead to forfeiting the car permanently. The new proposal would let police tack on a $500 fine to the registered owner of any car used for street racing. It would also expand the definition of street racing to include drifting and street takeover events. The amount uh, is one that we took into account. We had discussions. We decided it was uh, something that could be meaningful, hopefully a deterrent, um, not excessive. When people do these things, it's not like a bad thing or, or, or whatnot. Like, yeah, some people may seem like we, we breaking the law or stuff like that, but it's just like... Like the Fast and Furious movies, it's a, it's a culture of life, you know, like we love cars, we love engines, you know what I'm saying? One thing Seattle's proposed street racing law leaves out is whether to penalize spectators. In Kent, city officials made being a spectator a misdemeanor crime. Councilmember Rob Saka says he may pursue a similar amendment for Seattle to better deal with the crowds who show up for these races. And also on social media, one person shared their doubts a new law will make a difference, saying, quote, where are the police? Just arrest and tow all the cars. New law? They will follow this new law right? And stupid and pathetic. How stupid and pathetic, rather. And another person commenting their frustration on Combo's website, saying, quote, adding to the law doesn't do anything and prosecutors aren't willing to do their jobs. In the, I'm the mind of that we let the victims sue the prosecutors personally for crimes committed by perpetrators that they do let go. You know, we saw recently in Tacoma that, you know, the spectators are penalized uh, in many cases because that's also been an issue there. So it's also not an issue here in Seattle, but around the region.
region that we cover here in Western Washington. Yeah, all around the region and, and around the country as well. And um, you know, something has to be done because it, it can't just go on like this forever with the same laws we have. I was listening to what that street racing advocate was saying about how it's like the movies, it's like Fast and the Furious, it's a culture. And I get you have a passion, but it's this isn't a movie, this is real life. And, and somebody got hit in a crosswalk, another person got shot, and it's not the first time that that's happened. So, I mean, this is serious. You think about a movie with stunt doubles mm -hmm. who are professionals and actors who are getting hurt. Um, so it's, it's, I don't think it's okay. I know it's probably a nuisance right. for the neighbors as well with the noise and, you know, they leave their, whatever, the tire marks and, and marks things. And yeah, like the that. tread marks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see what, saw it happen in Alki Beach, saw it happen, yeah. you know, out, right outside, you know, here in downtown Seattle too. It's not only, you know, a danger thing, it's a disturbance to the neighbors and the businesses yeah. in the area that's trying to run businesses or just people trying to stay home and think, things of that nature. So obviously something does need to be done about it because there can be a lot of ramifications if it doesn't though. For sure. We don't want to see any more people get hurt.